you got to do is who's, who's always takes these out and puts it in this drawer. But you don't like the you don't like the Madonna. No. Right? That's what everybody's got. Well, let me see. I wonder. No. You know, I've got. Yeah, this is Brian's. So it's the same same oh, Madonna the same thing. thing I'm trying to think where I would have. I've got. I had a spare one of these, but I don't. But this is my drawer. But I don't know what in the world I did with it. No, I'm trying. To, I probably didn't leave it here. It's probably. If I had to find it, I probably couldn't. This is Jim. Oh shoot. And it's not. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You're just part of the. the just to do the. Short prayer, the in the Eucharistic prayer. Yeah, just well. I'll, I know they won't hear it on the. Uh, yeah. Um, it's Saint Terebius today. If you do, if you go. Saint Terebius of Mount This is Sunday, anyways. Oh yeah, but it's still 23rd. Anyway, all right. I always, I always want to curry really? favor with the saints. Oh. So if it's still that date, I, and you don't do do what you want. I'm just kidding. But, okay. sir. Your mic is on.
Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Pastorate of St. Thomas Aquinas Parish and Our Lady, Queen of Peace, as we celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ on Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. We welcome all friends and guests who have come to worship with us, especially those praying with us via the live stream. During communion, there will be a special station in the center of the sanctuary where a consecrated low gluten host will be offered to only those who have any degree of gluten intolerance. Please come forward in the center aisle. The priest celebrant is Father Jay Poster. Our con celebrant is Father Tom Gillespie. Our entrance song can be found in the gather hymnals. It is number 535, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 535. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. This is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing.
that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, Karen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Please be seated. The congregation will read the part of the chorus which will be shown on the screen. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, 
Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, one of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful, even unto death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him, pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against as a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will raise it up again. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began to say to, to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held the council they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, 
so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do it for them what he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole, co- the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see which each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads, saying, Ah, you who destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down on the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Lord, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and Joses and Salome. 
These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and had ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was evening, since it was a day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joses, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. With the reading of the Passion, which we just did, we can forget that this day started out joyously with Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The Jewish faithful who welcomed Jesus that day are reenacting a ritual from the Feast of the Tabernacles, one of the three holiest celebrations of the year. All men in Israel were expected to make pilgrimages to the temple in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles, along with the feasts of Passover and of weeks. The Feast of Tabernacles celebrated the fall harvest of grain and grapes. Tabernacles, or booths, as the feast is some kind called, were tents. They were to remind the Israelites of the tents they dwelt in under God's protection during their wandering in the wilderness. The greetings which reached Jesus' ears that day, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, are words from Psalm 118, which the people utter during the temple liturgy of the Feast of Tabernacles. Hosanna means, save us, we pray. The words were prayed as the Jewish people petitioned God to send the Messiah. Save us, we pray. Blessed is he, the Messiah, who comes in the name of the Lord. The people would chant this once every day for six days during the temple liturgy of the Feast of the Tabernacles. And on the seventh day, they would chant it seven times while waving branches. So the joy the people expressed the morning in Jerusalem was the conviction that here, entering Jerusalem on a donkey colt, was the one sent by God to save them. All God asks of us is to acknowledge that same faith and to live it. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grateful for the great sacrifice that Jesus has made in, on our behalf, we offer our prayers for all God's people throughout the world. For the Holy Church throughout the world, for vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, for forgiveness of our sins and the sins of the church, and for our transformation into the likeness of Christ. Cry out for God's mercy. for our world and the society in which we live, for an end to judging and condemning others, for an end to war and for vision, encouragement and hope for the future of our world. Cry out for God's mercy. For Christians everywhere who celebrate this Holy Week, may we celebrate with reverence, awareness, and devotion, and strive to invite and encourage our friends and neighbors to join us in prayer. Cry out for God's mercy. For those who carry heavy burdens in life, for those who feel their sins are unforgivable, for those who doubt God's love, and for those that mourn. Cry out for God's mercy. Hear, O Lord, and hold us in your mercy. For all who will be welcomed into the Holy Catholic Church this year, for our catechumens and candidates who will be indi indicated at the Easter Vigil, for our confirmation students who are an, on retreat this weekend, and for the gifts of the Holy Sp Spirit to fill and inspire them. Cry out for God's mercy. For Amy Elba, Leonard Hickman, Mary Jo Steger, Patty Desmet, Bill Weber, and all the sick. May they experience the healing power of Jesus in their lives. Cry out for God's mercy. Hear, O Lord, and hold us in your mercy. For those who have died, and for the special intention of this Mass, the living and deceased members of the Richardson and Jago families. Cry out for God's mercy. Hear, O Lord, and hold us in your mercy. For those who have asked us to pray for them and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Cry out for God's mercy. Hear, O Lord, and hold us in your mercy. Loving God, as you accepted the offering of your Son for our sins, we humbly place these petitions before you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I now invite all our young people to come forward with their offerings for our basket. We sing together number 527 in the Gather Hymnal, The Cross of Jesus, number 527. Renew your 
Let's pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace of Christ. And with your spirit. Oh, sure, there we go. You hide it on me. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. We sing together in the Gather Hymnal number 532, Tree of Life, number 532. Continue by singing number 554 in the Gather Hymnal, Were You There, number 554. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I encourage you, after we've celebrated this Palm Sunday, I encourage you to attend the rest of our um, Holy Week services, especially the Triduum, uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks.